All right, so I have placed my creature. My creature is now just on top of everything. But I don't have to just take the, the pose of my creature as it is. So I can hit Option Command T in Photo P if I'm on the right layer and get to a transform box. And of course, this way I can rotate my character. I can scale it like we were doing before. And I can right click and I can warp. But if I warp my character, it's going to start looking weird because this is not a not a optimized warp for for anatomy, right? So that doesn't look great. So instead, let me go back. We're going to use a special type of warp. And I'm going to do this on a duplicate. So Command J. And you can even keep it as a smart object. So now I go to Edit. And I go to Puppet Warp. Now Puppet Warp changes it into basically a 3D model that's flat. But it gives us a polygon grid. A polygon mesh is what they call it. Um, where we can plot anchor points. Now, anchor points are basically like grommets in a, a two-dimensional doll. Like a, you cut out a doll, and I used to make these all the time, but you stick a grommet, which is like a little, it's like a thumbtack, but it has little brackets that you bend. Yeah, so it can pivot. And you can like tilt the head back and forth. You can tilt the arms and the elbows. That's where you point, put these anchor points. So I'm going to anchor the foot. I'm going to anchor the tip of the nose. I'm going to anchor the back and the spine and the pelvis, the tip of the, the horn, and then maybe the back feet. And now if I grab one of those and start to move, you can see how you can angle it. And how anything that's not anchored, like this foot, is going to be moved out of position. I can use this to change just subtly the placement of these feet so they feel really solid on the ground. So it's not accidental that the angle of your character's anatomy is going to fit. It's intentional. And you have control of it. It's still using warp. It's still using all of that same, you know, transforming ability, but now in a much more targeted way. I can even put anchor points like between the neck and the chest, and I can have it like kind of rearing forward or pulling back, right? And if you put too many anchor points or you want to see what it looks like without an anchor point, you can hold down option. You should be able to. Let's see. And Deactivate anchor points. Shift, maybe? <laughs> so let's try it again. So I won't try to deactivate anchor points. It's better to have too few anchor points than too many. So that's why we always do it on duplicate. So I say edit, puppet, warp. And then you click where you want it to anchor. And then you'll be able to move those anchors. So this time I'm not going to do the horn, but I am going to do the neck. It's where the mesh comes together. And maybe the, the back spine. And then I can play with like tilting it on its back legs a little bit. Raising its head. Repositioning its feet a little bit. This will be really helpful in animating if you want to animate your character later. And you want it to feel pretty solid on its feet. So just a subtle difference from this, which is just the default way I brought it in, to this. Which if I can get the other one to turn off, you can see. And then I can always just use my history to decide between the two. Okay. Yeah. 
So you, you hit return to activate it, just like warp. Um, but I deactivated it by doing it on a duplicate and then having those layers turn on and off. It uses quite a bit of processing. So I'm going to do Puppet Warp one more time. And this time I don't want to mess with the head much. I do want to mess with the back and the legs just a tiny bit. So this is, sometimes you need it a lot, sometimes you need it just a little bit. But I want to widen the front stance a little. And I want to make him rearing forward just a little bit. Oh, you see how effective that is? Now if you do it too much, it's going to get, look really weird. right? So it's just little adjustments. Set that foot back a little bit, set this foot forward, set this foot down, maybe take this. There we go. Okay, now I hit return, just like a normal kind of transformation. Now, if I'm happy with that, I'm going to right click and I'm going to rasterize it because that's going to save a lot of memory because right now it's doing it to the smart object and you can see smart filter puppet warp. It's really great that this is all in the free version, but I need to rasterize it to, to play with it further. Now I always keep a smart object just from my original PNG just there, but now I'm using this pose instead. So just a slightly different pose to get the angle of the anatomy right. Next, I want it to sink into its environment a little bit. And so look at where the ground is. How can I get it to actually sink into this ground? Well, I want to find the layer it's standing on. And I've got a lot of layers here that I can consolidate. Oh, these could be so fun to play with later, though. But anyway. Uh, like the atmosphere, the clouds, because this is a still image, not for animation. The clouds and the pizza, those can all be merged into one layer. This background is barely needed. That can be blended into the sky. So I can take all of these layers, just select all of them. Come on, photo P. This is going to help your memory. Hold down shift. Select all of them. There we go. And then you can go to layer, merge layers, or the shortcut is command E. So that's going to be my background layer. It's all there in the background. Then I've got the mountains here. This is like my middle ground. I don't have anything in this layer that I need. I'm just trying to show you these things by turning on and off layers, but Photo P doesn't like that. So I'm going to delete layers I don't need. Keep all the layers I do need. And I can always play with the composition. So I can take up my, my, my French fry layers. Let's merge those together. Command E. And now, hmm, what did it do? Okay, Command E. Now I can move those up all as one, right? I could try them in different places. I could move these up so much that they're overlapping with my creature. Like I can move them up above my creature. Right. So many options you have if you understand compositing. I can move my creature down behind them and that helps sink it in. but I think I liked them a little lower down because I like seeing this. So let's try this. Let's try just moving them up a little bit. I 
I kind of like right there. Let's see, do I like that better? I kind of like that meatball. Yeah, it's tricky. Let's move them up like that. So understand what's working. So I'm going to move these, merge them together. Then I have my foreground. I've got the turkey. I've got the kind of meatballs in front of the turkey. I don't even know if I need those meatballs anymore. I got this background meatball. Let me soften its edge a little. This isn't helping my assignment one at all. What this is helping is give the focal point of the creature escape composition to my creature. So I can move all these mountains together. And the only reason I'm going to keep the mountains separate from the sky is so if I wanted to, I can move where that pizza and clouds are in the sky. So let me show you what that might look like. I want to have control of these things. So I can do that, like shift it if I want to. And actually, I kind of like shifting it over over here a little bit. Ah, we'll see. Yeah, maybe if I just move it down a bit. What do I like better? Okay. All these texture fills, I do usually want to keep those separate because there are different opacities. Sometimes they're in different blending modes. And now what I can do is I'm going to sink my character down through the atmosphere. You know, one texture fill at a time. And that feels too heavy. That feels maybe a little too clean. So I'm going to move it in the middle here, and then I'm going to use my soft eraser at a low opacity, because everything's soft edged anyway. Soft edged eraser, pretty large. And not on my creature layer, but on the texture fill above it. There we go. I'm going to start erasing away from that those clouds. just on the top where that background is. So it really kind of showcases, highlights this creature. But that kind of blur helps because if I move him up, he just looks a little too stark. We haven't done any adjustments yet. So the first thing to do after you've posed your creature is image adjustments. So we start with levels. And I'm going to darken the midtones, brighten them, see what it works. It works for it to be a little bit brightened in the midtones. And then in terms of adjustments for color balance, there's a lot of warmth in the lighting of this. So I'm going to go to the midtones, and I'm going to try pushing it a little bit more towards red. Right? Don't go too far. But you can see that that direction is helping. And yellow in the midtones. Maybe a bit towards magenta and a bit away from green. In highlights, I'm going to push the reds, push the yellows. Maybe push into the greens a little bit in the highlights. And then the shadows, I'm going to go towards the cyans and the blues. to Get that full spectrum. And then maybe a little bit of magenta in the shadows. Let's see. So this was before any adjustment.